today I'm at Black Duck Lagoon, not far from my place. I'm not here to photograph wildlife, I'm here on another assignment. Most of you would know that I like photographing wildlife and this is my main point of my channel now. But I've been getting quite a few messages on, Charles, I'd like you to do a video on the settings to use when we shoot panoramas. Today, that's what I'm going to do. Now I know I've done quite a few videos on panoramas, I'll put some links up here now, but people saying like, what settings do you use? What shutter speeds? What aperture? What focal length? So this video is going to give you some ideas and some points on what settings to use, what camera modes to use, why you should use certain camera modes, and how to get consistent panoramic photography every time you go out. Let's start with number one, camera modes. What camera modes should you use? So let's start off with shutter priority. We say, okay, well, this is where we're going to photograph. We're going to start from here, work to there. I'm going to set for the brightest area here, 1 400th of a second. We start here, but at 1 400th of a second here, the camera is going to set a very low aperture because it wants to gain a lot of light because it's too dark. When we come back to here, we go, yeah, I've coded the aperture changes. When we come back to here, the aperture will change again. And what this does is that it changes the depth of field. If we had movement on the water here, we would sometimes see stuff in focus, stuff out of focus. So shutter priority is not good. So this is the first panorama taken in shutter priority. You can see I set my shutter speed to 1 320th of a second and the ISO was 100. Now look at the first image here. Like I stated in the video, it was going to be very dark. So my aperture had to open up to F5 to let in a lot of light. And as we go along each frame, it's getting brighter. So the aperture closes down to let in less light. So I went from F5 to F6.3, F7.1, F9, F10. You really see the difference between the image at F5 and F10. At F5, the sky is very bright, whereas at F10, the sky is more balanced with the foreground. Now this is the panorama just stitched without any editing involved. And you can see the left hand side, the foreground is very bright. The sky is very bright. But look at the banding halfway through the image here. Can you see how it's going from bright to dark? This is why you shouldn't use shutter priority to photograph panoramas. Now this is the image edited as good as I could get. And you can still see that although it's a bit more even, there is still a very wide contrast between the left and the right hand side of the image. Next, aperture priority. Aperture priority, we set the aperture, the camera sets the shutter speed. Now, aperture priority is great if I was just photographing what's in front of me here. That would be great because everything looks the same. But if I start here where it's shady, then my shutter speed is going to be very low. I'd like freeze framing everything when I'm taking a panorama. So here, because I've got a low shutter speed, the trees are moving a bit. So I might see movement in the trees. Then when I get to bright, be nice and frozen, then I come back here to shady area and it'll be moving again. I don't want that. The only time I want to use aperture priority is if your whole scene is exactly the same. But if you want consistent and you don't want to make a mistake, then I tell people you use manual mode. So these are the eight images taken in aperture priority and my settings were F11, ISO 100. Now it's not my aperture that is moving, it is my shutter speed. And just like the shutter priority, look at the first image here. It is quite bright compared to our eighth image down in the bottom right hand corner. The first image, 1 60th of a second, then it goes up to 1 80th, 1 100th, then 1 125th, 1 200th of a second, and the last three images are 1 250th of a second. Why? Because this is the brightest area. So just like in shutter priority, this is why I state you shouldn't use aperture priority to shoot panoramas unless you're seeing is the same from left to right. But if there's a dark area or very bright area, you should not use shutter priority or aperture priority. But this is the, the stitched image. Just like in shutter priority, you can see a banding in the center of the panorama. And even after editing, I couldn't get that banding out. 
it became less obvious, but you could still see it right in the center of the image. There is no way to fix this in post-processing. You might as well just throw the image away. Manual mode means that you control everything. I look at my bright area here, or if I've got bright and dark areas, I try to average, but I don't want to blow my highlights. So most of the time, I will choose my brightest area. So I go, okay, well, my brightest area is here, so my shutter speed has to be 1 400th of a second. My aperture has to be f11, and I will take the whole set like that. Then when I get home, where it's dark, I can lift up the highlights because we're shooting in RAW. If you're shooting a panorama, you have to shoot in RAW. So I can lift up the shadows and I will get a beautiful panorama. Now this is the last set that I took in manual mode. The settings are constant. The shutter speed 1 320th of a second, my aperture f11 and the ISO 100. Now look at the first image here compared to the first two sets of panoramas. The image is a bit dark because I metered for the brightest area, but they are constant. You can see that the sky is quite constant between the first image and the last image. Now this is the image stitched without any editing and you can see the sky is just constant. The foreground is dark all across the image. The sky is a little bit dark. Once I've edited, I've brought out the shadows, reduced the highlights and look at our image here. It is beautiful, well worth spending the time. Now, as you know, I took all these on a tripod with my panoramic rig to make sure that you could see each image individually and they all look the same. If I was shooting this just during the middle of the day, I would just shoot handheld because there was no reason to use a tripod during the middle of the day. Now we have the focal length and we have our aperture. Aperture governs depth of field. Focal length is how much you want in your frame and then where you're going to focus. Let's start with our focal length. I'm using my Nikon Z6 II with the Nikon 24 to 85 FX lens. I like shooting as much as I can, unless I really want to zoom in into a subject. But here I'm at 24 mils. Then my aperture. I want as much of depth at field as possible. In wildlife photography, I shoot at minimum. So f5.6, but landscapes, we want as much of what we see in focus. So we're going to shoot at f11. I would not recommend you using anything less than f8 unless it's very early in the morning or at night. But we're talking about daytime photography. Let's choose f11. We've got beautiful amount of depth at field. So we've taken care of our focal length. We've taken care of our aperture. The last very important part is where we're going to focus. I like focusing one third in. So I've got this little island in front of me. So I'm going to focus on that island. Once I focused on that island, I'm going to switch my autofocus button off. Why? I don't want the camera to refocus at every point. Look, I've got stuff very close to me here. If I'm focusing here and then in the background, I'm going to get different focal planes. You don't want to stuff anything up. Keep everything the same. Set your focus point, then switch to manual focus. Something that I forgot to mention is vibration reduction. If you're shooting a camera handheld, then leave vibration reduction on. But if you're shooting on a tripod, then remove vibration reduction because it's going to hamper your photography and you're going to end up with some blurry images. So make sure vibration reduction, VR, is switched off. Then you're right to go. I'm only shooting on a tripod in daytime here because I want to show you consistent photography. So every panorama I'm going to take, be it shutter priority, aperture priority, manual mode, is going to look the same, the same field of view. Because if I was here just to take a panorama, I would just shoot handheld. There's no need to have a tripod because in daytime, the tripod is a hindrance because I want the action to be so quick. So it's just ding, 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 and I'll, I'm done. Last point. We can see we've got some wind coming around. We've got some water in front of us here. Make sure 
that you're going with the flow. What is with the flow? Let's say, for example, you're at the beach here. We've got waves coming left to right. Which way am I going to shoot a panorama? I'm going to shoot left to right. Why? I want to go with the waves. If you're going against the waves, when you stitch your panorama, you're going to find choppiness. The waves aren't going to match up. You don't want that. After all that effort, you don't want that. If the waves are going left to right, you don't want to be shooting right to left. Same as clouds. If the clouds are moving from right to left, then go right to left because it's the same as waves. If you're going left to right, you're going to end up with very choppy clouds. They're not going to match up. When the clouds are coming towards you or away from you, that's the best time. But we can't choose how the clouds or how the waves are going to move. So we go with the flow. We follow mother nature. Because we shoot in RAW, remember, we don't shoot panoramas in JPEG. We shoot in RAW so that we can adjust our white balance and all that. Where it's dark, I can just increase the shadows and I can have a beautiful blended panorama. So as you can see, between shutter priority, aperture priority and manual mode, you will get the best results in manual mode. And this is why I state that whether it's daytime or nighttime, you should just use manual mode and you will walk away with some great panoramic images every time you go out. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, give it a big thumbs up. Stay safe, enjoy your panoramic photography, and I'll see you next time.